Hey there, it's Simon here. How are you? Today, I thought we would look at three different kinds of chords that Jimi Hendrix used to great effect on lots of his tunes. Stay tuned, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so before we kick off the lesson, if you want the chart and uh, that I'm going to refer to, please go and check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Simon Morell. Uh, I was teaching a lesson today on uh, Axis Bolt as love to one of my private students, and uh, it came up, it was just talking about different kinds of chords that Hendrix would use, and it kind of sort of struck me a little bit. I've learned lots of Hendrix tunes over the time, and, uh, and there's three in particular which I think he uses all the time. So... Uh, I thought we'd do a little lesson here on YouTube on them. The first up is an E7 with a sharp 9. Now, he used this so much that a lot of people refer to it as, you know, that Hendrix chord? You know, the one that... So, let's see how it works. It's basically, I've got an E major chord, right? Except I've got an E7. I put a dominant 7 in there. So if you know something about your chord theory, you know that a major chord has one major third and a perfect fifth. To make it a seven, we add a dominant seven, which is a D in the key of E. So we've got E, G sharp, there's my D, and there's an E. Right? Okay, and to make it sound just quite strange, you can add what is really a flat third into the chord as well. So that's strange because you've got a flat third and a major third, a minor third and a major third. But because it's over the octave, so you know, past the next E from the root E, it doesn't sound anywhere near as weird as if you put them right next to each other. So you get this fantastic sound. Now you will have heard that in Purple Haze, you know. You'll also have heard it in uh, Foxy Lady, which is played in F sharp. You'll have probably heard it in uh, Crosstown Traffic. Right? So that's chord number one. Chord number two is actually really just a major chord. Now, a uh, major chord isn't particularly, uh, you know, personalized, I mean, major chord, right? Now, the cool thing about the major chord though, is you've got three notes, one, three, and five. Now, what Hendrix would often do is play the major chord, so here's, so for example, an E flat. See those bits? That's just the triad, right? The three notes that we need to make the chord. And he would add in the major third bass. So here we've got E flat with G in the bass. Now what's cool about that is that you think about, so I played a little bit of Wind Cried Mary at the beginning of the video here. So what he's doing there, he's going with E with an F bass and then hammering on into to resolve. Now, you can use this in lots of different ways. So, you hear that? So, here's E flat, E flat major. Right? So, all of that You'll hear that in Little Wing as well, a little bit, you know, all sorts of, lots of those ballady sort of tunes that he used, he, uh, he wrote. Um, you will hear that all over there. So, just like that. And if you wanted to riff around it. Just use the major scale. All right, now the third and final one is actually one of my favorites. It really is just a sus2 chord. So a sus2 chord means you're playing the first, the second, and the perfect fifth of the chord. Now, you might have seen that sort of thing. So if I play an A major here, for example, and I just lift my third finger, that's an A sus2 because I'm no longer playing a C sharp. And that's cool. 
if we're in the 80s playing Coded House or something. Oh, it's more like there, isn't it? You see what I mean? Right? But how he used to use it, he's, he would do these big hand chords, the kind of grab chords. So there you can hear that chord, right? So I've got A, 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 <laughs> lots of A's. And then mute, E, E. Now, you'll hear this in uh, Castles Made of Sand, where it goes. And you'll also find it at the end of Little Wing, where he hits a G. Hits an F, there's the add nine, or the sus two. See what I mean? So you get that. Then he plays a C. And D. That goes back to the first one, that, that riff I played it there. So here is D with an F-sharp bass. So you can see that he used all of these chords pretty frequently. Um, I hope this lesson has helped. Um, uh, please do subscribe and click the bell and all that stuff. And you want more lessons and the charts that accompany all the lessons here on YouTube, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Simon Morell. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye for now.